A story. In 1785, Mozart's father, Leopold, traveled to Vienna to visit his 29-year-old son, Wolfgang, and his daughter-in-law, Constanze. During the visit, Leopold participated in a chamber music party at Mozart's flat at Domgasse 5, Mozart's flat. A museum now is still there, just around the corner from St. Stephen's Cathedral. The party consisted of reading through three of the six string quartets Mozart had recently composed and dedicated to Joseph Haydn, who was the guest of honor that evening. After the reading, the 53-year-old Haydn, who was, at the time, the most famous and respected composer in the German-speaking world, took Mozart's father aside and told him this, quote, before God, and as an honest man, I tell you that your son is the greatest composer known to me, either in person or by name. He has taste, and what is more, the most profound knowledge of composition." Unquote. Joseph Haydn was not just one of the greatest composers who ever lived. He was also among the most honest because history has proven him correct. Wolfgang Mozart brought more technique, imagination, and melodic and harmonic taste to the compositional table than pretty much anyone before him or after him. This program is a crystalline example of why we must consider Mozart to be among a handful of the greatest human beings who ever lived. The overture, that is, the instrumental prelude to his opera, Don Giovanni, of 1787, puts Mozart's preternatural skills as a dramatist into high relief. The opera is about the often comic shenanigans and grisly demise of that archetypal bad boy, Don Juan. Mozart's overture integrates both the tragic and comic aspects of the story. It begins darkly and oppressively in the key of D minor with the same music that will mark the death of the Don at the conclusion of the opera. Following this bleak introductory music, the body of the overture swings into the bright key of D major and features upbeat and comic music that represents the Don and his manservant, Leporello. The expressive bipolarity of the overture is an analog for the bipolarity of the opera itself, a presumably comic opera that ends for Don Giovanni quite tragically. The same lyric and dramatic skills that made Mozart the greatest opera composer who ever lived also made him the greatest composer of concerti who ever lived. Mozart's final concerto for clarinet was completed just six weeks before his death on December 5th, 1791. We hear the opening of its second movement, music that puts the human voice-like sound of the clarinet front and center.
The second half of the concert features what has correctly been called the greatest symphony composed before the 19th century, Mozart's 41st and final symphony, cast in C major and nicknamed Jupiter. The moniker of Jupiter, appended to the symphony after Mozart's death by a critic named Ludwig Rellstab, is most appropriate. It is a royal and majestic symphony, eminently worthy of being named for the Roman king of the gods. Let's hear the regal opening of its first movement. Mozart, thank you. <laughs> 